Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. My name is Andy with Boatworks today, and, and this week we're going to be diving into the transom. Finally, we're going to be ripping that apart, as well as going over another quick tip number five, six, hell, I don't remember what it is, but in any event, uh, another quick tip to try and help you get your boat ready, looking its best, ready for spring. So with that said, let's just jump into it. So when I'm planning my cuts here, I want to make sure that I'm well within the area where there's actually coring, because the difference of where there's core and where there isn't uh, is the difference of, say, like right here where it's two inches thick versus right over here, four inches away, where it's only a quarter inch thick and it's solid glass. So what I, I want to make sure that I'm well within that because cutting on the outside uh, of where the coring is and actually getting into the actual hull and accidentally cutting through, uh, well, let's just say that's not on my happy list of things to get done today. So I'm going to make sure that I stay well within where I think the coring is. And it's, in most areas, it's fairly easy to see where it, you know, where it stops. But right along in here, I don't exactly know if it ends, you know, an inch in or if it ends, you know, three inches over and just before we get over to this mounting hole here. I don't know. So just to play it safe, I'm going to make all my cuts coming right up these, uh, uh, these old mounting bolts for the Armstrong, come across, and then back down again, going down those same uh, old mounting bolts from the Armstrong bracket. All right, so let's see what we actually got going on here. Uh, well, just visually here, looking along the top and along the, uh, uh, I guess, well, kind of both sides, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, you can tell that uh, there may have been a little bit of moisture, but for the most part, not bad at all. I, I'd still consider that, you know, actually in pretty good shape. But as you get down towards the bottom here, you can see there's a noticeable color change. And I'll give you one guess uh, what's, uh, what's been causing that. All right, so I'm gonna grab my handy dandy little moisture meter here. And right there, you can see up along the top, it's reading 10%. Now, just for reference, uh, the way I have my meter calibrated, 10% is essentially dry. It, it doesn't start to get concerning until you get, ah, uh, you know, into your mid 20s, as far as the, the moisture percentage. So that's up at the top, 10%, which is pretty good. Now, let's compare that with the bottom.
Yeah, 33, 34, 35. Yeah, that's, that's not good. But the true test is, how does it smell? Uh, well, kind of like vinegar and ass. So now overall, basically when you look at this, roughly a third to maybe uh, not quite half of it is, is wet, and obviously that needs to be replaced. You can't just leave that in there, and you, you can't just do half of a transom replacement. I mean, if you're going to do it, you got to you know, completely do it. Uh, but it is a good thing that this was actually opened up because had this been allowed to just, you know, just, if I had just buried it and kind of turned a blind, blind eye to it, uh, if this boat were to ever sit outside in the middle of winter, at least in Wisconsin winters, um, there's enough moisture in there where after it froze, it would have expanded. And once that happens, you're going you're gonna to get some cracking, whether you're going to visibly see it along the interior or it would have been visible through the exterior uh, and allowed water to come in from, uh, you know, uh, from around that bracket mountings. So either way, I, I can't say I'm real fired up about having to do this, but it's the right thing to do. So, you know, I guess just bite the bullet and it is what it is. Now, I did do a little bit of initial grinding here just because I wasn't quite sure where the, uh, the, the, the plywood came up to and specifically where I wasn't sure is how far over it went. Now, when you're looking at this here, uh, it comes down at an angle and it seems to kind of continue down. This is as far as I could get uh, Then I was running into this uh, little addition onto the stringer here that uh, someone had put on. But it seems to like angle in, I'm guessing it's going to come out to about right here and then just drop straight down. Now I can't get into this area until I remove some of the stringer area or this extension that was put on. Um, when this is all said and done, I want the transom in place, you know, with the new Kusa. And then I want to extend these, uh, these stringers onto that larger area of the, the, the transom core. I don't know if I'm going to put together any kind of a bracing right through here. I haven't quite decided that. But, uh, you know, one thing at a time. I can't, I can't uh, cut these out right now because, well, I need, to, I need a sawzall to do it. And <laughs> why I don't have one, I have no idea. But I don't have a sawzall. So I'm going to have to go on a little bit of a tool run. So before, so before I can go any further with this, I need to get a need to get the sawzall. I need to cut these stringers out, and then uh, then I'll have access to be able to come in and actually extend out to see where the actual plywood core ends along these sides. But until then, I mean that's that's gonna have to wait until next week because well it's already Friday and well I won't be able to go for a tool run until Monday. So on to the next segment, which is gonna be the quick tip number five or six. Hell, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, I think it's going to be a good one because it's something that everybody does on their boat every spring. So this week's quick tip is a bit of a follow-up to the one that I did two weeks ago when I was talking about buffing compounds. Now, just as a bit of a quick little side note here, uh, when I put that out, uh, I was not aware that this Total Buff was not in stock over at uh, Total Boat or Jamestown. Um, oops. <laughs> so... But I, uh, but I got a hold and just kind of see what the situation is. And evidently, uh, there was a bit of a shipping delay. And I, for whatever reason, who knows what, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say it probably has something to do with, uh, well, I don't want to say it because YouTube's going to ding me. Let's just say it probably starts with a V and ends with us. So something like that. But in any event, uh, it was supposed to be back in stock 10 days ago, but, you know, things happen. But now the revised shipment date for this stuff, it will be shipping back out tomorrow, well, when you're seeing this tomorrow on Monday morning. So they should have it back in stock shortly thereafter. So if you're looking to do a pre-order on this stuff, again, because springtime, I don't know how fast it's going to sell out again. So if you're looking to do a pre-order, you may want to go over there and check one out and just kind of get on their waiting list. So now, just as a bit of a recap, now the video that I put out a couple weeks ago, when I was going over the actual buffing part, uh, I, I sped that up. And I'm sure there was a lot of information that was just kind of lost, you know, in that process. And Generally speaking, when I get to stages like that, I usually speed them up just because it, it's, it's kind of a slow process and boring. Nobody wants to watch a half an hour or even five minutes of someone literally just running a buffer like this. So I always speed it up. And shortly thereafter, I got a bunch of e emails from people asking about more specifics on not necessarily the buffer that I was using, but what I was doing, you know, because you, you saw at certain times it was angled, so other times it was flat, was I adjusting the speed, you know, and so on and so forth. So that's why I kind of want to want to cover today because buffing your boat, buffing the hull, that's basically an annual tradition. It's a right of, right of way for any boat owner. So uh, with that season coming up, 
thought I'd give that a quick, uh, quick one over here. So now let's just pretend that this panel here is actually gel coat. I mean, it's not. It's the, uh, the demo panel that I did using Alexio Paint earlier this winter. Again, if you haven't seen that video or those, that series of videos, I'll include playlists down below in the description. Um, but when I'm buffing gel coat or even just Alexio, the, the compound that I'm going to be using is going to be this total buff. Now, I want to make a little bit of asterisk here. Uh, you do not want to use this compound with any other paint that I have found other than Alexio. It, it, it just it just doesn't work. I mean, there are, there's other approaches like that, which maybe I'll touch on that maybe at a later week for a, another quick tip. I've got about four or five more weeks of this, <laughs> and then we can kind of put this one to bed. But unless you, unless you actually like these, if you do, let me know, and I'll continue to kind of sneak these in every once in a while. Um, but I'm going to be, for gel coat, I'm going to be using this to the Total Buff, and I'm going to be using a wool compounding pad. Now, when you're looking at pads, there's generally speaking, there's two different kinds. There's the white kind, which is what, uh, what I've got here. It's a little bit stained now, but it's, it's white. This is the compounding pad. This is the pad that you're going to be using f to remove uh, s uh, scratch marks, you know, sanding scuffs or literally just light uh, scuffs on your hull, say, like uh, where your fender always sits when it's at dock. You know, you always get that dull area. You're going to use the white compounding pad for removing scratches. Now, if you wanted to do as a bit of a follow-up, then you can switch over to a polishing pad, which is, are the ones that are yellowish. You know, they don't have quite the, uh, quite the bite uh, that the, the compounding pads do, and they're more for polishing, which is why they're called a polishing pad. So for this demo, basically in 99%, I don't think I've, I don't think I've used a polishing pad for anything in maybe one or two, maybe three jobs in like the last 20 years. I just don't use polishing pads, but I use compounding pads all the time. So if you're gonna, if, so if you're looking at buying some, buying, uh, buying one, uh, don't even waste your time with the polishing pad. It's not gonna do what you need it to do. Uh, just go straight to the compounding pad and use a good uh, compound and you'll get, you'll get uh, the results that you're looking for. Now when I'm running this, the, uh, the speed that I run this on is gonna be generally fairly slow. Um, let's just say, uh, well, I, I've actually looked it up so I can give you an RPM number. So now this buffer here runs from 400 up to 2100 RPMs. Now I'm basically running a little bit less than half speed. So RPM wise, I'm probably right around that 800 to 1000 RPMs. So fairly slow, roughly half speed. You know, every buffer is going to be a little bit different. Uh, so take a look on there and, you know, whatever the range is, uh, just try and find that 800 to 1,000 RPM. And that's kind of the speed that I use for both paint or this Alexial as well as gel coat. Now, when I'm running this pad, basically I'm going to be holding this in two different positions. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that you run the buffer or the pad just basically laying flat like that. And you, you generally, you don't. Uh, if you're trying to do any kind of heavy compounding with the pad flat, what's going to happen is this is going to want to start dancing around on you, all right? Now, this pad spins clockwise, so what I, what I recommend is basically to hold it up on a slight angle, not a lot, you know, nothing like this, just a very slight angle so that all the pressure of the pad on the surface is going to be basically going in the same direction, so now it'll be a lot easier to control. You're not going to have this thing wanting to kind of walk away on you and, and uh, potentially, you know, well... I almost knocked myself off of a ladder once because of this. <laughs> so running the pad then, again, keeping around that 800 to 1000 RPM, you're going to keep a slight angle on here. And as far as the amount of pressure that I'm pushing down, not much. I mean, generally, uh, it, you know, when the surface is horizontal here, you can just let the weight of the buffer itself um, just kind of hold itself down on the, uh, on the surface. You want to let the compound do the job. You don't necessarily want to put a whole lot of uh, pressure going down because then you're going to create basically hot spots you know when you're uh, buffing the surface so you'll keep it on an angle as you're working in the compound and then as the compound starts to kind of get dry and starts to kind of powder up then you can kind of lighten up the pressure you know uh, the, the, uh, going down you can kind of lift it up a little bit now you're going to want to hold it flat because you're not you don't have a whole lot of pressure on the surface so it's not going to want to go dancing around on you but just take it up pr light pressure and then just keep it flat, and then you'll be able to polish off any of the excess swirling, you know, from, uh, from when you're compounding. And when it's all said and done, all, you need, all you're going to need to do at that point is just a very light wipe down with a, uh, a what's it called, microfiber towel, and you, the, the surface should look absolutely fantastic. So just real quick, let me show you what I'm talking about here.
Ooh, that's pretty. So on that note, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Now, I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance, that does help quite a bit. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, and I will see you next week, hopefully, with all the rest of that plywood ripped out. We'll see. But for right now, I gotta go tool shopping. <laughs> this has been a Boatworks Today production.